Hello, this is Angela with Progress Permaculture. I'm here with Ruth. We wanted to make a final video, a conclusion to Ruth's poultry raising project that she's been doing for over a year, right? Yeah. So um, Ruth, do you want to tell them how the project started out and what your hopes were? Well, it started out about a year ago when we made our Honesty Farm Stand, um, where we would put extra produce and stuff in and we would have a box where people could leave donations and all the proceeds from that farm stand were going towards the turkey project we wanted to do where I wanted to raise ethical meat for the holidays mm -hmm. next year or now. Mm -hmm. um, Can you tell us Ruth why was it important to you to uh, raise your own turkeys? Well I really like to make a big effort to eat sustainably and eat ethically and I like to eat poultry a lot, but a lot of poultry farming in America is not good for the bird and it's not good for us. It raises them in really gross and inhumane environments. And the best way to know that your bird was treated right is for me to do it myself. Mm -hmm. And it's also, if you do get a local sustainable bird, it's very expensive, so it was also more cost efficient to do it myself. Right, so so um, this originated because I had made a turkey, you know, when you go and get your holiday groceries, they often give you a coupon for a free turkey. And Ruth had said, uh, mom, what are you doing? Like, that, yes, that turkey's free. I really like eating turkey meat, but I don't feel good knowing that this animal probably lived a pretty awful existence. So the options for our family were to no longer eat turkey meat, as we've chosen not to eat pork or beef that um, is not sustainably and ethically raised by local farmers. So that's been a big sacrifice. It means we eat a lot less meat. Ruth said like, I know you get this free turkey at the holidays, but I, I don't want to eat that anymore. I don't want to participate mm -hmm. in that. So she said she wanted, you wanted to raise your own turkeys. So that's yeah. what we did. Um, thank you to everybody who supported her through the farm stand and who's watched all of the videos in the process of raising our own poultry all the way up until the point of putting them in the freezer and what that process has been like emotionally for Ruth and for me and for our whole family because really like our whole family was invested in the project even though it was your project and you mm -hmm. took responsibility for raising and feeding and caring for the birds they were part of the family flock right mm -hmm. so we just finished cooking up one of the turkeys and mm -hmm. it smells delicious it's amazing and by we I mean Ruth um, cause she's quite a good cook. So do you have any final thoughts as we're getting ready to enjoy a turkey dinner? Um, that is a turkey that we've raised from a one day old chick. Do you have any feelings or thoughts about ethical omnivory and sustainable eating and this journey for you? Well, I'll feel a lot better about eating this than eating a bird I know was got from an unethical source or most of the ones at the grocery store. Um, I don't know. Don't any other thoughts okay do you feel sad about it do you feel conflicted or do you feel like you would do this again or you would keep being an omnivore um, um like how do you hi b bye b uh, b's going for, for a walk so ruth how do you feel now that we're about to to sit down to a turkey dinner how do you feel knowing that this is you know blondie it's a turkey that that you raised from a day-old chick well i honestly feel less sad than i thought i would um I've had relatives and strangers online say like, how could you do that? Like emotionally, how could you eat a bird that you knew? Um, and honestly, I feel much less sad than if I was eating a bird that came from a different source because I wouldn't know how that bird was treated and it was probably treated pretty poorly. So can I just, can I just ask you, like mm -hmm. for you, the real issue was, and I think, I think for me as well, but you really highlighted it and helped me think more consciously about it. The issue is not really our feelings as people, right? Yeah. So it emotionally is harder to butcher and eat an animal that you knew personally. Mm -hmm. But just because you're more removed from that process, that doesn't mean it's more ethical. Yeah. Um, and that it's not really about the level of discomfort that you feel. It's about making sure the animal feels minimal discomfort and has mm -hmm. a more humane life, right? Yeah. At the end of the day, how we feel and how sad we are and how uncomfortable we are doesn't really matter to me as long as I know the bird was treated well. Mm -hmm. Like many people would be more comfortable with eating a bird that they weren't at all attached to and they don't even have to think about how it was raised. But that to me is much more sad and I wouldn't feel right with that. Mm -hmm. Do you think you'll keep eating turkey in the future? Yes, it's very tasty. <laughs>
I'm hungry right now. I know we need, okay, so we'll we'll go because we're gonna eat dinner. Um, but thanks thanks for going along on this journey with us. I know it's hard. I know a lot of my viewers are are vegetarian or vegan, and I appreciate those of you who who don't agree with our eating habits, but um, we're willing to like to weigh in. I think that um, you know I've said this a number of times online recently, in kind of like spats or disputes with with vegan advocates. I think vegans have a tremendous potential to advocate for humane treatment of livestock and that they could find fantastic allies in those of us that are really invested in ethical omnivory. And that those of us who want to make sure that the livestock that we choose to consume has a really good and humane life and a quick and humane end. And I think that if vegans and omnivores can can really partner in, in working to end um, you know, battery farming, CAFO farming, unethical ways of raising and producing the meat that we eat in this country, that we could be a force for good and a force for humane treatment of animals. And so even though we have really different ways of eating, I think we have that common ground and we can come together and, and really make some some changes and push for changes in the way that we raise livestock here in America. So um, if you're a vegan or vegetarian and you are interested in connecting with ethical omnivores, and if you're an ethical omnivore and you're interested in connecting with vegans and vegetarians and finding that common ground, and that common way we can advocate for those principles that we all hold really dear. I hope I hope that you will leave a comment below and, and maybe have some thoughts or suggestions about how we can connect and be effective in our desire to have more ethical treatment of those livestock that we all are, um, are hoping can have a better quality of life. So thanks for watching. I hope that you will check out all of our upcoming videos here in the next week or two, and we're gonna go have dinner. Thanks, bye. What's your verdict here? How's she taste? Really good. More flavorful than the the store bought kinds, honestly. Mhm. Mm okay, I'm gonna stop filming because I really want to <laughs> eat some too. It's so good. Okay, bye. <laughs>